guys, Jennifer here. I am here to share with you something that I don't usually do on my channel because I always thought I wasn't that great at it, but I decided to join in with Poet Spice on her Color Crazy collab, and I thought I would kind of give you, uh, you know, show you my process of how I do um, coloring, and you know, since I'm pretty much a beginner, I thought I would show you what I do, what I feel is the easiest um, way to color images when you might not have Copics or you know, or you're not that good at using them, which is me. <laughs> I'm still kind of practicing on the Copics, but I was hoping that this would kind of get me out of my comfort zone and start using some of the stamps that I have. And so this week I decided to use the Julie Nutting Love Day stamps and these are them. I wanted to color her because I liked her dress and her shoes and her hair and um, I thought that would be a fun picture or um, stamp to color. So that's what I'm going to do. I was trying to fit two on here. What I did was I took some of my good Gina K papers and I cut them down so that I can use them for stamped images. Each week I will be posting a video at 5 p.m. on Saturdays so it will have my um, the images that I've colored for that week and I hope that you enjoy this series. It's going to be from March 4th, which is this Saturday, to May 6th. So that's going to be two months of coloring, and I'm really hoping that it gets me out of my fear for coloring. <laughs> so I figured I would go ahead and kind of show you what I plan on doing here. So I got this Misty a while back and I've only used it a few times. I do like how it works because I am not the best stamper. So I love that this is kind of foolproof, but you obviously do not need a Misty. I just kind of splurged on it because I stink at stamping sometimes. And that's good in mixed media, but <laughs> not if you want to color images. So I am using I'm using this India ink. It's archival and fade resistant and it's perfect for use with markers and watercolors. And since I'm going to be using my watercolor pencils, um, I thought that I would use that ink. If I was doing with Copics or an alcohol ink, I would use my Memento ink. But okay, so let's see how this, I just love how this works. You know, if it's not dark enough in one area, I can go back over it. See, like, I didn't like how her arm looks right there. So I can go back over it with uh, the ink. And it'll be good. So there we go. And I love that it perfectly aligns the, the um, image. So I will probably go back and do another image over here. And probably because I want to cut it out because I have a project in mind for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my stamp. Because I am ridiculous like that. Gotta have everything cleaned up. So that's my little stamped girl and she's just so adorable. So I'm gonna move my Misty out of the way. And then I'm gonna show you how simple I color this. I have the skin colored pencils but I didn't bring them with me so I'm too lazy to go look for them right now. Okay, so this is my cute little image. 
I did a trial run earlier just because I wanted to see if I could use these for the skin. So I started off with the skin. I mean, it's really easy to use the colored pencils. I know you can't see much, but it'll actually be the base layer. This is number three. If you have the Julie Netting watercolor pencils. This is actually very relaxing to me. So that's basically what I do. I go um, just over the entire skin area that I wanna. And then I take the darker color and I just kind of, like if I'm gonna have um, the sun maybe coming from the back of her, then I would just, you know, add some darker color here, maybe in between her hair pieces, underneath her chin and stuff like that. This is just to give some dimension to her skin. And then I added some color here underneath her dress and then like she probably has a tan on her legs. Maybe down here. And like that. And then I'm going to take my Prima water pen. Of course, I have barely any water left in there, so. Let me fill it up from the other one. Um, I do use this a lot. I sometimes I'll use this in my Bible journaling. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, I like it. I like not having to use a cup, but that's just because I'm lazy. So anyway, I made my uh, tip a little bit wet. I know it's stained, but it's just because I've used it before and I've already cleaned it. So I start by like moving around the lighter color first and then move into kind of move around the uh, other color. I'm not squeezing because I don't want it to be a puddle of color. I'm just kind of going over this to blend it. And you really don't even have to do much. I mean, for me, I just find this easy you know, there's not that many watercolor pencils to choose from. <laughs> so I find it a little bit easier to make a combination. I mean, and the cool thing about watercolors is it, it's really neat when it's not perfect. Um, yeah, I <laughs> like, this is probably my preferred method of coloring. Probably because I like a subtle coloring instead of really bright. Maybe I'll get into that later, but I'm just not that good. And then if you don't, if you feel like you washed it out a little bit, like I kind of feel like I washed that out a little bit, I just add a little bit more and then go in and color it again. And I probably could have used watercolor paper. Sorry. I really like this uh, Gina K paper. So anyway, that is all I'm gonna do to the skin uh, for now. I can go back and add if once it looks, you know, once it dries a little bit. So I was going to use paint, this really pale pink, just because I love pink. Um, I also love this teal color. It's probably super bright, but you know what? Since I did pink, I'll, I can do another one in, in pink if you guys want. So I'm going to do this teal color. And with the dress, all I did was kind of just like in the corners, like where they would overlap is kind of where I use the colors the color and um, 
I think it looks really cute like that. And you'll see this color come to life when I add the water. I'm doing like a really pale like drawing over this part because I figured in the middle of each ruffle I would have the lightest area. And you don't, I mean really you don't even have to like make sure you do it perfect. You just want to try to stay in the lines if you can. You don't even have to color the whole thing, it's just touching down a few areas and then here I kind of wanted it to be various. I'm just trying to make it so it's not all one color so maybe a darker color in the corners in between the ruffle like that and then I'll go in with the water brush and you can take your uh, wet wipe here that I use for the uh, stamp, to clean the stamp. And that way, make sure you don't transfer the color. And then I just start blending from the middle because I don't want to lose the, tran you know, like the lighter and the darker color. So if that makes any sense. So here we go. I'm gonna color the middle part just to put some water down a little bit. It's a very little. And then just a little bit to blend this down. See, it's a very pale wash, so I feel like I'm going to have to add a little bit more color, maybe? We'll see. I just think this is so pretty, and it's... Seriously, if you don't know how to color, this is like the best way, I think. I do plan on cutting her out to use on a project. I feel like it needs more dimension. So I'm adding a little bit more color. I don't want to saturate the paper though. You can see it's just, I'm just leaving my brush to be a little bit damp so I can move the color. And uh, yeah, that's basically all I do for the dress. And you know, if you didn't feel like coloring the dress, you can always paper piece the dress. I want to do a pink heart. Okay. And then let's see for her hair. I'll do like a dark brown. Um, let's see, I guess I should color in all of her hair. 
These bangs are so tiny. Kind of just coloring in her hair. And I think that I want to use this color here to kind of give some more dimension in the hair, like right under her chin area here, right under the headband. Right at the roots there. Right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to move that color around. And that's pretty much all I do with her hair. I'm not that great at hair, so. If you need more dimension, you can add a little bit more. All right. So she is pretty much done. I just need to do her headband and her shoes. And I think I'll do, is this a navy blue? I think I need a black for her shoes. So I am just, just barely putting any color on here because her shoes are so tiny. It's as easy as that, guys. I'm putting some of this teal color for her headband. Oh, let me clean that off. So there we go. There is her completed. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, I hope that you like this and stay tuned for, you know, any additional videos that I'll have every Saturday. So, and go check out the other ladies um, involved in the collab. I will leave the links to their channels below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.